So let's see what else Michael Pachter had to say. I know some of you might be tired of hearing about him at this point, but he does always make pretty interesting predictions every year. So, I mean, he's made some other pretty interesting predictions that I actually mostly agree with. Like I said, more times than not, he gets things right. He got it right that Nintendo really didn't wasn't going to break through in the mobile market. They really haven't, except for Pokemon Go. He predicted that there would be no big game announcements from Rockstar, and he got that pretty much nailed. He said Switch sales would be under $20 million. He nailed that because right now it's only at $13 million. And I'm talking about his predictions for 2018. Battle Royale and Call of Duty, of course he got that one right, but that's pretty much what everyone was <laughs> predicting, so he got that. But he's always getting wrong. A new Elder Scrolls game, he predicts that for 2015, 16, 17, 18, there's going to be a new Elder Scrolls game, and he always gets it wrong. And I think that's, like I said, in length previously, he doesn't, you know, that he's just way off the ball when it comes to Bethesda and Zenimax. He just doesn't have uh, as much knowledge as I guess he should when it comes to those companies but he has other predictions for 2019 so he's he you know besides that they're gonna there's gonna be a new Elder Scrolls game definitely not gonna happen Elder Scrolls 6 is definitely not happening in 2019 uh, he's made other predictions such as Respawn will launch 2000 next year Titanfall 3 in the new Star Wars game uh, he'll, he'll at least be half right. I can't see at least one of those games not coming out. I don't know if they're going to launch two games in a year. That that might be a little bit of a stretch. Uh, I think definitely we're going to see Titanfall or the new Star Wars game, whichever one. Uh, he also said we'll get major game announcements, whether it's a Bioshock game or a Borderlands game or whatever. But that That's pretty obvious at this point. Uh, Ubisoft's lineup will include four AAA titles. I expect those to include Skull and Bones, which is already announced, Splinter Cell, Watch Dogs, and Rainbow Six. Yeah, um, I I don't know. I think they want to milk Rainbow Six Siege. I don't know if they want to make a new game yet. I mean, it's the it's making a killing. People are, are, are new people keep coming getting into the game. The the player count it remains steady. So I don't think we're gonna get a new Rainbow Six Siege game or whatever they call it, Rainbow Six Siege Two or Rainbow Six whatever. I think Rainbow Six is good for the next couple of years, I'd say, because they really want to milk out the games as a service model. I know the game is three plus years old, but considering Ubisoft tried to break Rainbow Six Siege into the Chinese market recently and failed, that they're trying to expand the game, I doubt they're really working on a new game anytime soon in that series. So that's a big no. Uh, I, I disagree with Michael Pachter on that. There'll probably be a new, new Splinter Cell. It's been a very long time. Uh, new Watch Dogs, yeah, I think so. I mean, th- there's still a void, but, you know, Rockstar d- hasn't released a Grand Theft Auto game, so an open world game where there are cars in it, they might as well milk that while people are yearning for a new entry in, in that field. Um, and then he also said Nintendo will launch a fully handheld version of the Switch at 199 That's very interesting. Uh, if that happens, then all my predictions about the Switch, again, because I've said the Switch is going to fail if they keep doing what they're doing. I didn't say that if they release a fully handheld version of the Switch, the Switch is going to fail. If they do that, then the Switch is fine. You know, people are thinking I'm just hating on Nintendo. No, I'm saying as it currently stands, the way things are now, if Nintendo does not release a fully handheld version of the Switch that's actually handheld, no docking, the Joy-Cons are built into the body, you can actually fit the damn thing in your pocket, and maybe, you know, maybe it might be a bit of a stretch, but maybe the... Uh, the battery life is halfway decent and actually uh, feasible. You know what I mean? If they do that, then Nintendo's going to be... The Switch is going to be fine. But if they don't do that, then it won't. So, just clarifying on that front. So, I don't know if that's going to happen this year. Maybe to make it more competitive with the new consoles coming out. Maybe. But as it currently stands, it doesn't look like the Switch is going to continue to grow as a platform unless they do that then you have um he also says streaming services are going to go further along yeah that's a pretty safe prediction i'd say and then he also says activision will make overwatch and blackout free to play now this is very interesting because i don't remember the last time activision blizzard has made a game free to play now i know Recently, they made Warcraft free to play, but not completely free to play. Like you, once you reach a level twenty, or whatever, you have to pay up. So it's kind of like a demo with that in that in that sense, not necessarily free to play. But 
I think that it's it would be an interesting prediction making Overwatch and Blackout free to play. I think there's a greater chance of Blackout becoming free to play than Overwatch because Blackout's gonna you know they they obviously put a lot of work into Blackout and to maybe be to to stay relevant and be competitive with PUBG and Fortnite and all those other games they can maybe have Treyarch continue working on Blackout while new entries in the Call of Duty series are are made like in the mainline series that do not have Battle Royale and then Blackout becomes its own thing kind of like in H1Z1 they had a uh, H1Z1 the zombie game then they had King of the Kill and then King of the Kill evol- evolved into just H1Z1 and they pretty much scrapped the the zombie portion of the game so I think something similar will probably happen I think in the sense that they're going to they're gonna I mean they're not gonna scrap Call of Duty don't get me wrong they're not just gonna make Battle Royale games every year that's a bit of a stretch but I think you know you'll have Treyarch have a free-to-play blackout that'll keep interest in Treyarch so that when they release their next game with another Battle Royale in three years people are gonna buy it up um, and they'll why during that point between that point, you know, you'll have a smaller studio releasing updates, like a smaller portion of Treyarch releasing updates for the game, kind of like how they've been doing with Black Ops 3 and Black Ops 2. Remember, Treyarch has uh, kind of, you know, compared to other studios, have actually continued supporting their their Call of Duty games it, compared to Sledgehammer. I don't really see Sledgehammer doing much right now with, with, um, with Call of Duty World War II, I guess because people don't play it anymore. But uh, I know they did put new weapons in Advanced Warfare. I remember they did that. And I don't think Infinity Ward is doing anything with Infinite Warfare still. But they are doing... But Treyarch has always continued supporting Black Ops 2 through Call of Duty Ghost, through Black Ops 3 pretty much. Um, And they continued supporting Black Ops 3. The last update for Black Ops 3 was like a few months before Black Ops 4 came out. So I think it would actually... I think that's a spot-on prediction blackout being free to play i think that would be a very smart thing to do because you do have the kids buying the skins and all that other stuff and and more kids would have access to the game if it was free to play than if it was a full 60 dollar game plus a season pass and all that stuff i i I guarantee you a lot of people bought call bought black ops war who don't barely touch the zombies do not touch the competitive multiplayer but they only touch the blackout portion so if they separate the blackout portion make it free to play I think that would be, I think that would be good. I think that I think that would be a very smart thing to do. Keep it free to play for a few years, and then you know leave it in purgatory after that when they release Blackout Two or whatever, or you know whatever the new Call of Duty game would be, Black Ops Five. I, I sure as hell hope not, but that's probably what they're gonna do. If Blackout really takes off, they're gonna continue the Black Ops trend and keep going with that. Uh, as far as Overwatch is concerned. I don't know. Um, The 18... So he says the 18 Overwatch League owners have been assured by Blizzard that it will expand the audience for Overwatch. So, I mean, I guess that actually makes sense. I mean, how else are you going to expand the audience besides releasing new heroes and doing all that? I mean, I think that's kind of drawn out at this point. I mean, they're obviously going to continue releasing new heroes, but I think... Activision looked at what Valve just did right now with Counter Strike Source and uh, Counter Strike Source. Uh, sorry, it's not 2019. I'm in 2003. <laughs> I'm in the wrong year. Um, no, Counter Strike Global Offensive becoming free to play. I think they looked at what they did with that and how you know Counter Strike is a great example because Counter Strike has a booming esports scene right now, and they, they this was one of their best months ever. Since since being released in 2012, being a paid game for all that time, now being free to play, and it's 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 doing it's making good results for for Valve. So I think they might look at that and be like, you know, because Counter Strike has a similar business model in terms of selling cosmetics and all that, having a huge esports scene, and Activision Blizzard, whoever runs the show at this point, and I'm pretty sure it's just Activision now. They definitely consolidated power. It used to be. You know, Activision Blizzard, but Activision and Blizzard would kind of run their own ship separately. That's definitely not happening so much anymore, like I talked about in length a few weeks ago. But definitely, uh, I definitely see that being a possibility, actually. Yeah, I, I, I can't. Overwatch and Blackout becoming free to play is actually a 
pretty interesting prediction that a lot of people may be skeptical about, but you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna just roll with it. I'm gonna say, you know what, Pactor, you're probably right. I think that's gonna happen. Probably not the same time, being like, oh yeah, Overwatch is free, now Black Ops free. Uh, I think they're gonna space it out over the year, maybe in the middle of the year. Overwatch, no, maybe in the middle of the year, Blackout will be free, and then towards the end of the year, Overwatch will be free. I don't know. I'm not sure how they're gonna do it. I, I don't necessarily know a lot about the Overwatch League. Uh, I think they're just gonna see how the Overwatch League does this year, and if you know it's on a decline instead of an uptick, they're gonna say Overwatch is free to play. But if it continues to do well, I don't think they're gonna see a reason to take the sixty dollar price tag or the forty dollar price tag, however it costs at this point, off off the table because that's good money. Good good money still coming into the game plus microtransactions. So. They really are only going to make a game free to play if they know it's going to make them way more money than it's making them already. But if it's still a money maker, if it's still a cash cow, they're not going to make it free to play. That's why Rainbow Six Siege still has a, a very expensive price tag on it. Although they have a standard basic edition or whatever that's like an entry level. It's like $20 now or $30 instead of $60. But if you want the full experience, you're going to have to pay at least $60, even three years later. So... I think I think those are actually spot on predictions although I am very skeptical about when it will happen in the I don't know if it's going to happen in 2019 but I think they might make it free to play in both of those games in 2019 if if nothing else make blackout free to play just to compete to make it its own entity separate from Call of Duty maybe make uh maybe make Treyarch just an exclusively exclusively battle royale developer you know, my, loosely tied with Call of Duty, so you still have those the skins from Call of Duty and the heroes from Call of Duty and all that stuff, because that's you know good money maker. Who the hell doesn't want to play as Ghost or Mason, you know, and buy those skins? But uh, keep it loosely tied, but maybe keep it a little bit separate and just have Treyarch be the Battle Royale developer. You know, there's no reason you should have all the games being Battle Royale. That would just be overkill. Can you imagine if they made Fortnite 2 a year after making Fortnite? Because Call of Duty comes out every year. You know what I mean? That just doesn't make any sense. So, yeah, I think keep keep Blackout free to play. Have, you know, Infinity War do their thing. Maybe make a Modern Warfare game or whatever they want to do. But make it a, a full Call of Duty experience. Single player, multiplayer, all that stuff. And the people who are really interested in, in, in Battle Royale... They get to play Blackout, and it will continue to be supported over the years until Treyarch makes another game, and then Sledgehammer can do their thing also. That's honestly what I think would make the most sense, and that's what I think they probably will do, and I think that'll make them a shit ton of money, especially when their stocks are way down. It's a good way to keep investors happy. It's pretty reliable money when a game's free to play. When a game is dead and they make it free to play... It's a good way to keep the money train going. Not saying Overwatch is dead, but within the next couple of years, it very well may be. So it's a good way to keep Overwatch relevant, make the esports scene, keep the esports scene going, all that advertising revenue, all that from the esports, keep that coming in. And yeah, I think that's actually a pretty solid prediction, and that's what I think they will do. So yeah, you actually got this one right, Pactor, and I think he actually got... Everything else right except for that Ubisoft thing making a new Rainbow Six game. I don't think that's happening. But everything else, I might separately make another thing about talk about the Switch. But only if they actually announce it. And then I'll tell you what my prediction would be with the Switch going forward with that announcement. And um, uh, everything else is pretty solid. That Pactor is actually done. But I just think that Bethesda prediction was just way off.